Welcome to a brand new episode of CNB Bazaar Buzz here on the NDTV network. I am Cyrus Dabar and we've got a jam packed show for you today, including some very well special car makers making their debut and a very, very special celebrity guest. Have a look. So let's start straight with that very special car maker I just mentioned. Uh, you might not think that they make cars or they would want to make cars, but it might come as a surprise. I'm not going to say much. Have a look at this video. The AK-47, the most recognizable weapon in the world that has been used by military, paramilitary, guerrilla armies and unfortunately others too, single-handedly made the Kalashnikov name world famous. And now, in a strange turn of events, the weapons maker could soon make electric cars. Kalashnikov has showcased the CV-1, its first electric car, and it is unmistakably Russian. Based on the IS-21252 Kombi, a Soviet-era station wagon from the 1970s, the new CV-1 plans to take on the gold standard in electric cars today, Tesla. But while the Model 3, the most affordable vehicle in the Tesla range gets from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 3.5 seconds. The CV-1 will take a more relaxed 6 seconds to get the job done. The CV-1 also claims to have a 200 mile or about a 320 km range on a single charge, which incidentally is also less than the 220 mile or 355 km range you get on a base level Model 3. The new automaker has not indicated what its price would be or when it would be launched just yet. That said, even though it does look quite strange, the CV-1 will most definitely find appeal with a whole generation of people who are fond of the retro revival movement that is full steam ahead, all puns intended, the world over. And yes, it would be the perfect car to take on a zombie army in case we ever have to face an apocalypse. But that's not the only mobility solution Kalashnikov has planned. If you are more of a fan of two wheels, they have a solution for you too. And yes, it looks like the kind of thing that Chuck Norris would have ridden in his famous Delta Force movies. Presenting the SM1. And yes, just like its four-wheel brethren that we showed you earlier, it is an all-electric two-wheeler. Painted in the same matte brown shade that would look right in place for any military in the world, it will be exclusively available for armed forces only when it actually makes it to production. What we know so far is that the SM1 is equipped with a brushless DC motor with water cooling and the rechargeable battery is a lithium ion unit which has a power reserve of up to 150 km. The Kalashnikov SM1 also has a maximum speed of about 90 km an hour. Suspension duties are handled by a beefy inverted front fork and a pendulum type central spring hydraulic shock absorber at the rear. But this crazy invasion ready spec motorbike isn't the only one that Kalashnikov has planned. There is also this and it is production ready. The UM1 is an adventure bike and no, before you ask, it has nothing to do with UM motorcycles. This too has a similar spec to the SM1 with a top speed of 90 km per hour and a range of 150 km. And with its plastic bits and bobs, it doesn't look as crazy as the SM1 does. That said, we think both these motorcycles will look ridiculously cool and will actually work quite well on Indian road conditions too. With the likes of Apple and Google both wanting to make cars and now Kalashnikov getting into the game, you never know who might be the next surprise new car maker. I'm hoping it might be Cadbury's making a nice chocolatey car. I'm just joking, of course. Now let's get into our next story. This one is an automaker. Well, not four wheels, but two wheels. And it is a very, very popular brand. It's Royal Enfield and they have a new special edition out. Take a look at this one because it's very, very interesting. <laughs> Royal Enfield has launched the Classic Signal Special Edition based on the Classic 350 in India at a price point of 1,62,000 rupees. 
the classic Signal 350 Special Edition pays tribute to the bike maker's long history with the Indian Armed Forces and unlike the recent Pegasus, will not be a limited run motorcycle. There are two new colors on offer. There's Airborne Blue and Storm Rider Sand and they take to pay tribute to the Indian Armed Forces and the people there who ride these motorcycles. Well, but what really makes the Classic Signals Edition really special is the fact that this is the first motorcycle in India from Royal Enfield to get ABS and it is about 15,000 more expensive than the standard version. This story is about the men and women behind uh, the bullets that we sold. The deep association of fortitude, uh, endurance, resilience and love uh, for the country as well as for their riding uh, that are behind uh, these uh, people. And that's an ode of the men and women who protect our skies and our borders. Royal Enfield Classic Signals Edition is only available on the 350cc version and the upgrades include a blacked out headlamp bezel, engine and exhaust muffler while the leather seat is finished in a brown tan shade. Special Edition gets a distinctive touch with a unique stencil number on the fuel tank that represents the production number of each Classic Signals Edition manufactured. The Classic Signals Edition is also the first motorcycle from Royal Enfield to feature ABS in addition to the rear disc brake. The dual channel unit will also soon make its way to other bikes from the manufacturer too. Mechanically, the Royal Enfield Classic 350 Signals Edition gets no changes with the power coming from the same 346cc air-cooled engine that makes 19 bhp of peak power and 28 Nm of torque. The engine is paired to a 5-speed gearbox. Bookings for the Classic 350 Signals Edition have already begun across Royal Enfield dealerships while deliveries will commence in September this year. The new Military Heritage Motorcycle is available with over 40 accessories including panniers, fly screen, engine guard, helmets, apparel and more. These Royal Enfield Special Editions certainly seem to be getting a lot of traction on our website and on social media and they seem to be extremely, extremely popular with the Indian audiences and I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a few more of these in the near future. Now though, let's get into a very hardcore Bazaar Bus story, something about the industry as we always like to add into our show. This one's about JK Tyre and their new R&D center. Samir has been visiting them and here's what he has to say. JK Tyre has inaugurated its new research and development facility, its largest ever in India. JK Tyre is the third largest tyre maker in the country and the company is now consolidating all its research and development efforts as it aims to be one of the largest players all over the world. We are at the Raghupati Singhania Centre of Excellence in Mysore, JK Tyre's new research and development facility and its largest in India as it aims to become one of the largest tyre makers in the world. The new research facility aims to consolidate the company's efforts towards product development, ideation and innovation for tyres in the passenger and commercial vehicle segments. The R&D facility will be bringing the engineers, technicians and scientists under one roof and will complement JK's current four research centres across the country. This uh, facility today has the capability to develop right from new material, literally from uh, a material technology point of view, to compounds, to develop process uh, technology. And also, if you see, there are two fundamental uh, you know, centers here. One is Hasetri, which is involved into all kinds of material process development, compound development, new technique development. And there's a tech center, which is the engineering arm, if in a way you can say, where we create products with the design product and use this knowledge to put it into the, the design. The research facility has been built at an investment of 175 crore rupees and will be testing everything from raw rubber to creating simulations and predictive techniques for future products. The facility employs over 180 personnel with an average age of 30 years. There are laboratory predictors for tyre performance with real-world application testing like rolling resistance. 
This R&D facility claims to be ready to meet tyre regulations for the future and has the equipment necessary to develop and test products. An additional investment of 50 crore rupees has been earmarked over the next year and a half for the purchase of more equipment and machinery. JK Tyre has 12 manufacturing facilities globally, which include 9 in India and 3 in Mexico with an annual production of 32 million tyres. However, the company is rapidly expanding production to meet growing demand. Now, you might not think much of them, but those tyres you have on your car are a very, very important part. After all, they are the only patch of contact you have with the road. Now, we're going to go into a small commercial break, but after we come back, stay tuned as we have our big celebrity guest. <laughs>